Video games are seemingly always on the cusp of another controversy-induced media storm. I myself have lived through multiple such shitstorms during my time on this planet, and as long as video games continue to be made and evolve, they will continue to rattle a few cages. Video games have been blamed for violence and shootings ever since their inception. Heck, video games were once falsely described as the cause of the Columbine shooting. A massive number of scientific studies looked into the relationship between kids, violence, and video games. While there is no consensus on the subject, that didn't stop people from pointing fingers directly at video games. The prime example of such finger pointing in recent times would be towards Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which made headlines thanks to its inappropriate subject matter. For those that don't know about this particular level, your character played as a deep cover operative in a terrorist cell. Now this is already a very touchy subject, but Modern Warfare 2 decided to handle it with all the grace of a hyperactive puppy in a glass museum. In the No Russian mission, you head into an airport and massacre a crowd of unarmed civilians. It caused a huge controversy that was so big, even the BBC reported on it. So fundamentally, it's a toy. No, it's a toy that suggests in the future we will be able to immerse ourselves in virtual reality, which is very it's exciting. It's a toy. It's a simulation. And actually what you say about people into games treat the people who aren't into them, it's the other way around. It's people like Keith Faz and possibly yourself who don't even know how to play the things and therefore say, we don't care, these are just stupid toy but boys. What, but, 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 I mean, it's a simulation. It's no but different from a Formula it. One. You're a Formula One game, right? You can say that's violent. Of course it's not real. It's a simulation. It gives you some of the kicks. It builds the adrenaline. It gives you some of the fun. It gives it the guys. It gives the level of violence. It gives the guys the kicks. Guys, the gigs, but not the girls. But Sorry, I, I, it left I me completely yeah, I, cold. I mean, you know, we, you know, it's all this wonderful thing about oh, it's got a plot. Oh, it's you know, all, all sorts of things mm. are changing. It's still about killing. I can't quite understand the connection but, that there is with but, the, the but, idea but, of but, killing. But isn't it the idea right now? I mean, I can't believe how many this is sold, and it's in your local petrol station. It's coming in on Tuesday night at midnight, and so forth. It is the world in which we live just but, 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 now. But, but, it is, absolutely. because obviously, you know, and I can see why mm. the world in which yeah. we live and your wars tonight, which everyone's got on the television every night, do influence demand for this. But hang on a minute, there's still some sort of moral question about how much it's you've handed to that. Great. It's a fantastically hypocritical idea that in a way you're supposed to be in this terror squad, anti-terror squad, but basically you know, you're going to kill civilians along the way. And you, you get point, well, you, you do, because I watched you doing it, because you're better at it than me. <laughs> you didn't, you but, didn't, I didn't even get that far. <laughs> but, you do not have to kill civilians the, at I know any you point don't, but that's why that's I tried to kill the officer. Infinity War tried to fix things by making the mission skippable and removed any collectibles from that area. Even so, people still claim that the game promoted terrorism. However, I'm not going to be talking about Call of Duty here, because for me the most interesting case of misguided criticism towards video games in recent times would be a little game from 2015 called Hatred. And, as you'd expect from such a title, it's not exactly a game about adopting sickly puppies with the goal of you ultimately nursing them back to health and sending them off to caring new owners. Hatred was developed by Destructive Creations. Nope, I hadn't heard of them either before this game. And much like the game, the company's name doesn't exactly imply puppies. And it centers on an abject, world-weary, genocidal dude who simply fucking hates this world. Actually, it's probably best for you just to watch a quick little snippet of the trailer in question, and then come back to me when it's done. My genocide crusade begins here. Okay, you watch it? Okay, great. I was kind of starting to miss you there. Anyway, that was the trailer that was released in early 2015, and subsequently caused a shitstorm which caused the lid of gaming's Pandora box to blow wide open. Whether or not the game's particular blend of laughable dialogue and violent top-down murderous gameplay appeals to you, there is no denying that it's definitely an attention-arresting trailer. And that is, ultimately, what every trailer sets out to do grab people's attention. There were innumerable articles written about the trailer, and I for one sat back and watched as an array of conflicting opinions bounced all over the place, like an army of flies around a lamp. I heard everything from people questioning how such a disgusting, immoral game can even come into existence, all the way to a collective apathetic meh from people who just see it as I saw it, as just another video game. Wow. So the question is this. Why did hatred raise eyebrows and blood pressure the world over? Surely it wasn't some kind of outrageously unique entity that was doing something radically new within the industry. 
Violence is a core part of the video game industry. That is without question, it's synonymous with the medium, and if you look up the biggest selling games of all time, you'll find that many shooting games not only make the list, but dominate the list. Is that a surprise to anyone watching this video? I sincerely doubt it. However, I firmly believe that it was all about the presentation of the violence that stirred the pot in regards to hatred. The blatant pointlessness of it all, and the angst-ridden protagonist's morose view of the world and its inhabitants, is what was at the heart of the controversy. And while I'm on the subject of the game's protagonist, I'm pretty sure that under that long, glorious hair, trench coat and sullen stare, he's really just a fragile, lonely boy who wants nothing more than a hug and a tub of Ben and Jerry's. The game's design, its protagonist and its marketing was a very conscious decision early on in the game's life. The developers were clearly seeking to create a game that sticks out from the crowd, and they were utilising the most overused method of garnering attention in modern media, the shock tactic. Here was a studio that only had very few employees, no prior game releases and what I can only assume is a very low budget. Clearly someone on the team decided that if a game of theirs was going to garner an audience at all, then it would have to be as provocative as it could possibly be. Otherwise, it'll just be lost in the sea of independent games that were being developed at the time. For proof of this logic, look no further than the description given by Destructive Creations. Hatred is an isometric shooter with a disturbing atmosphere of mass killing, where the players take the role of a cold-blooded antagonist who is full of hatred for humanity. Yep, I don't think that description could possibly have any more alarming phrases in it, unless they just added a slogan at the bottom for the crack saying, Fuck freedom and charity. It's almost as if the developers wrote as controversial and alarming a description as they possibly could, right? And it speaks volumes about the media's sensitivity to violence in games that this particular plan even worked. For better or worse, the game received far more name dropping and free advertisement than it ever would have had they decided to make that puppy adoption game. Hatred was featured on many major gaming websites and was written about in numerous opinion pieces around the internet. The word got out and a shitload of people knew about it and were curious simply because of the controversy surrounding the game. Destructive Creations literally couldn't have bought this kind of publicity or awareness because they were, you know, a broke as fuck independent studio. And this leads me to my main point. In the gaming world, violence needs a reason to be more widely accepted. In most first person shooters, you're a soldier who's tasked with killing enemy soldiers. Your killing enemies is justified because they're simply not on your side, so you must follow orders and kill to survive. In more sprawling games such as Fallout, killing can be avoided through stealth, lockpicking or an epic speech, but killing may lead to a more lucrative loot and better gear. In story-focused games like The Walking Dead, killing can be used as an empathetic way to end another's suffering, or to make a sacrifice to save someone whom you care more for. I could harp on about the different uses of violence with reason in the medium all day, but you get the point. The player has a motivation and a purpose for killing. On the other hand, violence without an apparent reason has always been a sensitive issue in that very same gaming world. Take Grand Theft Auto for example, the modern king of controversy. Grand Theft Auto and Rockstar games in general have always been a problem child for the industry, we all still love them though. But when Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, the panic hit fever pitch. Lobby groups tried to prevent it from being on the shelves as mothers and non-gamers thought that it would warp the minds of people everywhere and cause a violent crime wave rife with murder and tunes from Scarface. It was the first big, free-roaming, fully realised 3D world in which you could do as you please even if that included killing innocent civilians. And that scared and confused a lot of people looking in on the industry from the outside. Rockstar's manhunt was banned in many countries after a child in the UK murdered his young friend, reportedly influenced by the game to do so. Bully, another game from Rockstar, was, and still is, banned in multiple countries and had its development halted and changed due to persistent lobbying, most infamously by Jack Thompson, who tried to get every Rockstar game banned on the basis of them being a public nuisance. In Oakland, California, Matt, uh, Daryl Stallworth, the prosecutor, has asked me to help him prove to a jury in a murder trial 
that older men were using Grand Theft Auto 3 as a murder and carjacking simulator to train teens right, let, let on, let how to, on how to do carjackings. And one of the kids said, we played the game by day and we lived the game by night. Tony, it's a murder let let, simulator. Jack, let me let Tony respond. Yeah, that's absurd. You know, it, um, there's no medical back. There's no findings. No of course research, there is. No, no studies whatsoever that say you don't games, know that. Are, that, that are, Jack, let him that go. games are bad for children or it changes your mind whatsoever. That's, that's the first thing. Second thing is, these are not simulators for gang violence. I mean, the reality is what came first, the gangs or the, or the game. You know, the gangs came first Matt. and the game's picked up. I mean, Hang as, on, Jack. as he knows, he can go with all the legal battles he wants to. He's been involved in every legal battle ever with video games, every, you know, music, Howard Stern, everything. He's never won a single dollar. He's never actually won a single case. I'm pretty sure Rockstar Games at one stage felt as if they'd unwillingly poked an enormous hornet's nest and were begging for someone to jump in and help them. See, the thing is, games are still a relatively fledgling medium, having only come to truly dominate the world of popular culture in the past 15 or 20 years. It hasn't got a century of trial and error behind it like the movie industry, and moreover, it's the fastest growing and fastest evolving medium of all time. So as games get more and more realistic, the issue of an overabundance and consistent presence of violence will continue to rear its head from Pandora's box. Do I have a problem with violence in video games? Like, no, not at all. Much like I have no problem with violence in movies. Do I prefer if the violence serves a story as opposed to being a mere visual thing? Of course, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy mindlessly blowing the head off a zombie once in a while, or watching Rambo tear through an entire army whilst reciting a production line of one-liners. It's entertainment, and I for one can clearly tell the difference between fact and fiction. Games are an easy target because the lines in the sand haven't been drawn yet, and as the industry evolves and changes, people's perspective on what's deemed acceptable can't keep up with the technology. Is using a Wii remote to bash someone's head in really worse than merely pressing a button if it ultimately causes the same result? Violence will always be present in the industry, and how it's presented in games such as Hatred will always cause unwarranted criticism towards the industry. Will I ever be running out to buy Hatred? Nah. If I play it, will I run out and murder everyone or everything I see? No. Do I admire hatred for trying something a bit more outlandish and a bit more out there? I guess. Like any industry, different ideas and viewpoints lead to a more diverse, rich canvas for gamers to enjoy. But they also leave such views or creations open for discussion, adulation or outrage. So with all of that said, what is my ultimate opinion on hatred years removed from its controversial release? Well, it's still simple really. It's there for people who want to play it, and it can be avoided by anyone who doesn't want to play it, much like every other violent video game out there. I don't think that Hatred needed to apologize for being what it was, a mindless, corny spree of violence.